This race car has no driver. Look, look at all of this. So this car drives on its own up to 300 kilometers an hour. It's a self-learning car. Formula One is a sport that relies heavily on AI, which is expected considering the high-tech engineering that's used by the teams in order to extract the maximum performance out of the cars. But it seems like they're not satisfied with this level and are now going to witness the first fully automated AI Formula One race in Abu Dhabi. Yet you heard that right. F1-like cars will go wheel to wheel without any human factor commanding them. And on top of that, they'll have a mission of giving the viewers a unique experience through augmented reality. Will this boost the popularity of the sport? And more importantly, would it actually go the other way around and prove that we don't really need F1 drivers? It's safe to say that the F1 drivers are one of the most capable athletes in the world, considering the amount of work they go through in order to drive the machines that cost tens of millions of dollars. The fact that there are a handful of people who could push these cars to their absolute limits and thousands of people who work on making this a reality speaks for itself. But it is without doubt that the help of AI has been a tremendous factor in the success of Formula One. What this goes to show is that although humans have reached peak engineering and infrastructure with F1 and are keen on continuing to push the boundaries, it's impossible to do so without the help of AI. Thanks to it, the teams now have the capability of learning how much tyre wear the car would suffer with different setups, as well as predicting the car's behaviour in different corners at different speeds, helping the drivers optimise their performance. But of course, it's in our nature to push things to their limits. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, now what we're about to witness has the potential to change the way we view the sport forever. A completely automated AI machine is going to complete a race in Abu Dhabi in one of the most controversial racing leagues ever created, the Abu Dhabi Autonomous Racing League. Its inaugural Grand Prix is supposed to launch later this spring and the competitors will be teams made up of 10 different universities and research facilities around the world, with the main prize being $2.25 million in cash. Mark your calendars because on the 28th of April at the Yas Marina circuit, history is going to happen. The Italian chassis manufacturer Delara, one that is producing the chassis for Haas, is going to be one of the main centres of attention as they would have to prove to the world that the open wheel Delara Super Formula SF23 is going to change the perception of the sport. The car would look exactly like the ones we're seeing in Formula One, with the exception that instead of a driver, the car car would be driven by a computer. Due to this, the car will have a bit of a difference in the outside look, such as the lack of halo, steering wheel and pedals. The event will be operated by Abu Dhabi-based organizers Aspire, and the cars will be identical to each other, which should promote fair racing under these circumstances. The goal is to prove that they have what it takes to race in a fully automotive industry, and that artificial intelligence has officially reached the level of of replacing an F1 driver. Of course, there is a high possibility that both of these events could be held separately and they won't interfere with each other's popularity. But if the investment in the new series is a lot bigger and the costs are a lot smaller, it does have the potential to ruin F1's increasing popularity because after all, it's the robots that are taking away jobs from human beings. What this presents to Formula One is an actual threat to viewership decline because now that the newcomers have fallen in love with the competitive nature of the sport, they could very easily get bored of it if it continues to go in this Red Bull dominating trend. And in situations like this, there's always something that the F1 fans are going to be more intrigued about, which could very well be these newly founded series. But what would the car look like? The car would weigh exactly one 1,521 pounds, have a gas-powered inline-four engine, and the maximum speed it could reach would be 186 miles per hour, which is equivalent to 300 kilometers per hour. What the cars are going to differ from each other is the software algorithms that are going to be used by each team, as they will help the car navigate through the map as quickly as possible in the curves and corners. Aspire's executive director, Tom McCarthy, spoke about this project 
project in more detail last fall, ever since it became an idea. And he said, we combine talent, technology and extreme sports in order to forge a pathway to the future of mobility. We will combine state-of-the-art motor racing parts with artificial intelligence to deliver an extreme sporting experience. As I mentioned earlier, the fans would have a unique experience through augmented and virtual reality as they would feel like they were the ones going racing instead of the computer. The first race of this kind, although very interesting and highly anticipated, is not actually the first try that has been made in this field as back in 2017, two autonomous vehicles were racing around a Buenos Aires track only using sensors and onboard systems, even though only one finished the race. The engineering peaks are also consistently pushed in the Formula E series as this competition has been pushing towards making a series of its own. But so far, it's just a sketch and nothing more than that. The A2RL's race is going to be a one show only, but if it proves to be a success, considering the challenges it has ahead of itself, there are hopes of adding at least two more races in the future. Although this is definitely something that can be achieved, we must not undermine the amount of work that goes around an actual F1 car in order to build the perfect product. The thought of having a perfect product is an abstract one due to the fact that the teams are constantly trying to improve in certain areas. If you look at the RB19's dominance in 2023, and if you hear the statements made by Verstappen and his chief engineers that the car has its own flaws and could be improved furthermore, it does raise the question as to whether this new newly founded league would have the capacity to achieve that to a further extent and even more importantly would it have the personnel other than the researchers from the university to make it work and we shouldn't even be surprised if we see a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle between some of the f1 drivers and this ai powered car to see whether or not the artificial intelligence has officially gathered enough information to beat a professional in its own field Although this is highly speculative right now and we should not be setting the standard based on one race only as it took Formula One more than 70 years to reach the heights it has today, it shouldn't be viewed as a far-fetched scenario in any aspect considering the high increase of the AI-powered industry. The event has already been promoted by some of the most famous car fanatics on social media, such as Supercar Blondie, who went on to elaborate what the car will look like and how it will actually perform on the track. In her own words, the car is still a baby that learns how to crawl, which then again proves our point that we shouldn't have massively high expectations from the car itself because they don't have enough data and experience to suddenly pop off. But then again, when you have such an interesting league that's going to take place, you should know that it may be one of the biggest threats to F1's existence and prove that whatever they're doing can be done by cutting down the human factor to a minimum and with it, cutting down the production costs. With all this this in mind, do you think that the Automotive League has the potential to replace Formula One? And even more frightening, do you think that the Formula One drivers would actually have to prove that they're better than a data gathering computer? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.